Hey y'all, welcome to Cumulative Upkeep. It's Steve. I've got a quick one for you today just because humans didn't seem this my least popular video on the channel, which was this Bant Humans sort of deck that I put out before Ixalan came out that was the aggressive humans deck, uh, you know, with Knight Aaron of Eos that has Malevolent Hermit Protect the Negotiators in it to save you from board wipes and then the big over the top, like hold the multiverse kind of strategy. So uh, after Ixalan, we've got a lot of new pieces to it. So I want to show you a Boros Humans uh, deck and a four color humans deck, which incorporates this one, uh, basically versions, uh, pieces of both of these decks into a kind of aggressive slash control shell with much worse mana. But um, I'll show you the decks, as, I'll do the decks as we talk about them. I know that uh, in the past I've done what most other creators do, which is show you the deck list and then you can see, but you know, it's in the YouTube description and you can check it out um, for sure. Um, to see what the deck list is, but I just want to show you what the deck does and see if we like that better. Um, so it's one of those things where I'm reinventing the wheel. Maybe the wheel is already around and doesn't need to be reinvented, and you really want me to talk about the deck while looking at all the cards, which is fine. We'll do that at the end of the episode. If you really want that, just pop it in. Uh, otherwise, um, I think maybe it's more exciting to just jump in like this a little bit. Um, so um, we're going to throw out the veteran. It's probably going to get hit, but we really like to get some life against black red. So the idea of these decks is have a lot of these one drops so that they act as basically lands to cast our Knight Errant of Eos. You know, you can just really start to go off with them on that. Tattered Ratter. Okay, this is something new. So we'll put out the Vanguard and um, we'll see what happens. And we'll just go. Um, if this is the sort of rat deck, um, they really need the Ratter, so they're not gonna block. And if they do, it's fine. Um, so that's the basic shell. And then you've got the Copper Coat Vanguard to give everything ward, to give everything a little bit more punch. Uh, and then the Boros pieces, we've got Ash Party Crasher, who has haste and comes in and gets a counter. And then Baird, who, well, should we, if we ever see any of those cards, uh, Baird, who comes in and gives you, um, you know, uh, a token as a result of those counters. So that's good. So here we go. So Hopeful Initiative, for example, another great card when Ash comes later and pumps it right away. But the reason why we want the one drops is because they're basically free to drop with uh, the Knight Errant. So this will allow us to grab a bunch of cards, which we need since we've got a handful of Battlefield Forges. So we want this and we want Ash because Ash is just a lot of fun. Um, and the Knight Errant is a great blocker. Um, so they're going to have to deal with the Vanguard. And the Knight, they've got a lot of questions to ask themselves as they try to build up their strategy while I'm able to just sort of get going. Uh, this is a good test because they're going to flood the board with a lot of nonsense. They are going to have some, like the rat tokens that don't block. So it's a little bit different, but they are certainly going to give us a run for our money. Gnawing Vermin. Interesting. We'll go there. Let's go. Our other card in here from Ixalan that we have is Inti, Seneschal of the Sun, who comes in and pumps something and allows you to do all kinds of cool shenanigans. This is going to immediately give them almost lethal, so we're just going to go ahead and take it. And we'll put out the recruitment officer. And we're going to make them pay the price for trying to stop the initiate, which is what it's good for. There's also a Warden of the Inner Sky, which is the uh, new card from Ixalan that allows you to tap three things and you pump it, give it a give it a counter. Usually we're turning things sideways a little bit too much for that, but often you have veterans and Cathars that you don't mind tapping down. And when the board stalls, having one of those that you can pump to give vigilance to and flying, uh, which it does after it gets three counters, is really invaluable. My favorite thing is when they stack up to try to take out uh, the Knight Errant. You know, I love that. It's really kind of helpful. So they're going to get rid of the veteran. Gnawing Vermin is a fun card. Or they get rid of their officer. Good question. The fact that they can't decide is good for us. It means that they don't have a reasonable path to victory. Of course, maybe they just can't decide because they can't pay the word cost. Okay. Spear Guard. Okay, here comes our Alpha Strike idea. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we are just gonna go ahead and get rid of some stuff. 
And maybe I just want the little blue to be in the mouth just instead. Um, we are going to block this and we'll block this. That still gets through for a stack. And we've lost our veteran, but they've lost their engine. All right, cavernous souls is quite nice. I'm gonna put Ash out and Ash is gonna get a little haste for us when we drop the veteran. And we're just going for it. If they have it, they have it. If they don't, they don't, but waiting around doesn't help us. Um, they could do a potential of 18. Do they still have it? All right, they got it. Okay. Well, we played a little cavalierly against the rats deck. I've never actually seen that deck work. So that's kind of fun for me. Sorry. You got to see us lose. Uh, I really just needed to hold two creatures back and it would have been fine. And you were thinking that. You're like, Steve, you're playing so sloppy. You don't need to go in so hard. And I did need to go in so hard. But you know what? I'm playing a Boros deck. What Boros player wants to sit back and defend. Oh, no, okay. Let's try one more. Let's see if we can actually win one on my YouTube channel on how to win at Magic. Okay. Kind of sucks. It's not what we want. We're going to hope for the best. If we get another land so we don't have to put this down as a tap. Green, red, so they are... Uh, let's see. Oh, gross. They're the modified deck, right? Could be a dino's deck. It's hard to tell. They got a little mana hose the way we did. <coughs> All right. Okay. Oh, dino's. Cool. Well, we don't have a lot, oh my gosh, especially if we can't draw cards, we don't have a lot of great answers for dinos. Uh, okay, so we're gonna need Inti. Uh, we need to get a land. There we go. That's a lot to sacrifice for the card draw, but it's nice to have it. Hammer Skull's Brush, right? I mean, that's just a big boy sitting there defending. Which is why you want to play that deck. I think that's... Oh, and you want to do it for Fight Wizard. So let's see what we rig out. This is what it's going to be like. I'm going to lose two in a row. I won eight in a row with it right before recording. There it goes. So they fight rigged into a fight rigged. It's getting the exhibit meme. Okay, well, you know what? We can wait. On that. I realize that means they're going to get their other piece of fight rigging out, but I really wanted to do this instead. So we'll get rid of Inti. Um, okay. Depending on what happens, we have a potential victory next turn. With only three mana, that's kind of unlikely. And they've got four cards plus whatever they rig out. So oh, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, good. That's great. What it? Okay. 
think that's the wrong choice. I think they should have fought me. They must have enough door slaps to make sure they live next to him. Well, they may have or may not have door stops. But we're going to cap our I assume they've got an abrade or whatever that we're going to attack and we're going to run into the teeth of that thing again. Uh, let's go. Trumpeting Carnosaur, what a great card. Okay. So, why not take out the Cathar there? Feels weird. Like, I get this Rakasaur play, but why not take out the. What what are we doing? I thought I was playing bad. Like what? I don't understand that at all. I mean, I, we were in a good position, but I didn't think we were that good. Okay. You can kind of see it. Um, that's kind of the speed. Like a lot of Boros decks, you just kind of play sideways. If you're the kind of person who wants to play and do other things, like say record. Um, record videos for YouTube while playing without thinking too hard, then this is a good one. Let's try four color. Like I said, this is the world premiere of this deck. Um, I've had this in my head. Uh, I didn't build it until I decided to bite the bullet and craft my Caverns of Souls this morning. Uh, I got one through draft. I was like, great, let's just keep at it. I just wasn't able to, to get those. Um, so I thought, well, I have to get them. So I hadn't built it yet. Okay, uh, interesting. Let's try it. I mean... <laughs> you said four colors, did you? All right, let's go. Uh, this will show you the Katilda trick that I love. Um, it would if I had one more one drop, but you know, Katilda can drop and make this give you a mana. It's kind of big. Hopeless nightmare. Really? How hopeless is it? Okay, I'm going to discard. I'm going to have to discard Envy. I really want Katilda. Probably a bad choice, but you know what? I want Katilda. And Katilda allows us to go right in because it taps this for mana. I just wanted you to see that. That's pretty cool. Come on. Uh, remember the court? Okay, so in this deck, uh, what we have is the Boros sort of Shell, but we also have two cards. It's Katilda and Malevolent Hermit. Uh, and these cards exist in order to... Um, Katilda to give us a little extra mana, which is nice. Okay. And the Hermit to allow us to defend against things like board wipes or some of those big black spells like Virtue of Persistence by giving you a kind of superpowered mana leak sort of vibe here. Well, an important thing to oh there goes our Hermit. It's an important thing to note is that Hermit, which you pay one as an activated ability on the Hermit. That works is to clear the courtyard because it'll allow you to do a creature ability. The Cavern of Souls, which is otherwise a better card, does not allow you to do that. So we are going to go ahead and grab something. And then grab an Inti. And we're going to grab something else. And I have a feeling... Ash seems really fun. We've got to go quickly because they're going to, this is one of those decks where they just uh, eat your hand, eat your creatures, and then cast a virtue. Uh, that virtue is, is rough. Uh, virtue and Shieldred are both like otherwise unplayable decks. These cards will help you get over the top. So there you go. Okay, graveyard. Glutton is going to eat the rest of my graveyard. 
shoulder is going to sit there and punch me in the face. Sucks a little bit. Okay, what we want is cast out for white and then we'll play out ash. We want to cast that for white, play out inti. We want to cast that for white, play out dead. So are we going to make it through this next turn? No. Is that okay with us, maybe? They're going to have to think twice about attacking. Um, I don't know if they really care to attack. But that will make you want to attack. So mono black nonsense. Everybody's favorite deck. Well, we only have one more turn anyway. So we'll go ahead and get rid of it just for fun. That lifelink is just going to murder us. Okay, we're out. Let's try another one. There are door stops in the format. Uh, we could play more removal in the deck instead of the Cathars. But the more mid rangey we become, um, you know, the more we lose. For example, as I've been beating up on red decks with my Boros humans the last couple days, the decks that are easiest to beat in mono red, for example, are the ones that play the Nahiri's Warcrafting to be able to take out a shield and such. Because they just have to slow down so much to be able to play that card. You know? So it makes them good against that, but not necessarily everything else. So it's a give and a take in the format. And the thing about playing a human deck like this is, well, you're going to get to that spot where um, would you like to kill the trick? You either go fast and you win against one set of decks, or you don't, and you win against another. Okay, so we're on the Beanstalk, kind of a Lara value train deck here. Um, Didn't expect that. You can see how explosive we are. Um, let's try one more. That was fast. That was super fast. I think Attila is probably not right for this deck. I think just leaning into the Jeskai colors cleans it up a little bit. But Catilla's ability to just tap things to get your explosiveness is really nice. So the question is always, does the eight lands that tap for anything, you know, allow us to get away with nonsense like Attila. And so far, it seems like the answer is yes. Maybe? Okay. So, okay, Rot Priest nonsense deck. Okay, well, I don't know that we have a good answer to the Rot Priest nonsense deck if they have their good draw. That's fine. Come on through. You know you have a trick. And I don't have the time to waste on that. Okay. So, unfortunately, right, we don't have enough land. We can't catch up. Let's see if we can do one more really fast. Okay. So the idea is we flood the board with humans, and we have our Malevolent Hermit ready to go just in time to counter, um, you know, a board wipe uh, or something, Alara, things like that. 
and usually that works out. There's only four hermits, so you never know. Um, and it's only non-creature spells, but honestly, in a world of Cavern of Souls, being able to counter creature spells is not a... You know, that's not a great strategy to go forward with. This seems okay. It's not my favorite, but it's fine. I am liking Cavern of Souls. It turns out sometimes really expensive chase cards are good. It's like Stop the Press this Cavern of Souls is a good card. Okay, Copper Line Gorge. So uh, we're probably... Dinos, yeah. Okay, fair enough. We will sack up our Lunark veteran. We're not attached to it. We just like the life gain and the fact that we can bring it back from the graveyard. Has another permanent to enable an Ash later on. It also gives you life when things die, which is also useful. So we're not super committed to keeping it around. Wow, okay. Well, that's obnoxious. Okay, cool. Let's, um, let's Cathar this. I cannot, uh, no, it annoys me, but, and if we can get them down and we can flip it, that'll be good for us. You can heal us next turn. You know, slows us down. Getting rid of one of their, uh, enablers is important. I've got a Galta or whatever in there, probably. Uh, just keep throwing on your little things. The trouble is, this world tree is really going to make it hard for us to get around on this stuff. Um, you know, I don't want to... Super happy about this situation. I might have killed a another hermit. Let's get out the vanguard. We don't have the mana to engage the hermit, so we'll put that out next turn if we need to. What we really want. Okay. Well, okay, so these aren't the greatest examples of what these decks do, because in those last two things, both, you know, they stumbled, right? So you haven't seen it best play, uh, which is, of course, why other channels do it the way they do it. But I think that that was, that was pretty good as a proof of concept that humans can be decent. So let's take a look at the deck list real quick as we finish out, uh, and you can kind of see what it is that we're up to here, okay, I think. So the Boros one is just going to go fast. Right. Um, and uh, leverage hopeful plus ash is a really good combo. It pumps the hopeful immediately. Ash plus Baird is a good combo. It gives us a token. Uh, Inti in both of those is good. Uh, and then Warden of the Sky is always there. As it gets counters, it just gets really good. So this is a really good package. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, you will lose to a Sunfall every once in a while. But Sunfall seems less prevalent right now as people were playing with other kinds of decks. Um, it seems like so, uh, but in a world where Sunfall becomes the answer, we probably want a version of this deck. Now, probably getting rid of the Catilda, upping the Hermit count, and just going Jeskai is the right answer for this, but I just wanted to show off what Catilda can do in case we lost Catilda along the way and forgot that this was a card. Um, there's some value there in the Catilda piece. So there still is room for the Bant Humans deck that leans into Catilda and the level in Hermit, but... Without the explosiveness of the red cards, I'm not sure that it quite works. In case you're wondering why there's no five-color humans, there isn't a reasonable black human to go in this deck. I mean, you know, there are some really good black human one-drops uh, that are interesting, but they don't scale the way the rest of these do. Hopeful Initiate and Warden of the Inner Sky scale. I know Evolved Sleeper scales, but only in his own kind of... He's okay. I could see Evolved Sleeper in here. Uh, and there are a few other cards that sort of fit, um, but I really do think that um, probably, you know, uh, white, blue, red is probably the best version of humans you're going to get in standard. So uh, have fun playing around with humans. If you manage to make five-color humans work or, like, Esper humans work, let me know in the comments. I'd love to see what you're doing. 
Uh, in the meantime, uh, keep brewing, have fun, and uh, I'm going to see you next time with a few more crazy decks I guarantee you haven't seen anybody else do. Suspense. All right, I'll see you next time.